Since the time man first walked the earth, humankind has been plagued by an insidious creature driven only to consume the blood of its human hosts. Once believed to have been conquered, these monstrous horrors have once again risen to prowl the dark of night, invading the slumber of the innocent to feed its insatiable hunger for human blood and to threaten all of humanity in the return of the bedbugs. Cymex lectularius, better known as the bedbug. These tiny insects have been living with and feeding from humans for millennia. The Greek philosopher and teacher Aristotle wrote about these parasitic pests as far back as 4th century BC. Some 1800 years later, it was the medieval aristocracy who were most likely to transmit bedbugs as they could afford to travel and associated only within their own class. They tended to spread the pest among each other. Bedbugs continued to be a nuisance in people's lives. Then, in the 1960s, Americans finally gained the upper hand on this persistent pest. Now reports of bedbugs are on the increase throughout the United States. In fact, over the last 10 years, the number of calls and complaints regarding bedbugs has doubled each year. New York City keeps records of the complaints it receives to its bedbug hotline. In 2004, there were 537 calls. Just three years later, that number climbed to nearly 7,000. And the next year, 2008, saw another 35% increase to over 9,000 calls. And these are only complaints to the city-established hotline. It does not include calls made to pest control companies. And New York City is not unique. This is a national trend. Wherever people travel, the story is likely the same. Bedbug infestations are on the rise. And once this pest is established in a home, they can be very difficult to eliminate. Even if you've been bothered by bed bugs, you probably have never seen one. Dr. Richard Hausman is an entomologist and studies bed bugs at the University of Missouri. The immature stages of the bed bugs start out about a millimeter long. The adult stage is the stage that ends up being about the size of a housefly, but with a flat reddish brown body about the size of an adult tick. I often refer to them as a blood-sucking cockroach because they have some of the very similar habits, but instead of scavenging on crumbs and other kinds of debris, all the stages of bed bugs are coming directly for your blood. There are a number of reasons that bed bugs are making a comeback. Many scientists believe globalization is a factor. As business has become more international, our ability to be in different parts of the world in a short amount of time has increased. One can literally be in India one day and back in the United States less than 24 hours later. Human migration also enables bedbugs to spread. Bedbugs are hitchhikers. They don't fly and so they rely on us to transport them around wherever they end up. And so as we move about the globe, either for business purposes, recreation, travel, tourism, these types of human movements uh, take bed bugs along with them. Cultural changes have also contributed to the bed bugs' reappearance. Around 2002, for the first time in history, the United States population was greater in urban areas than rural areas. With more multiple family housing placed in closer proximity, bed bugs can move among adjacent rooms within a building. The reduction in the use of indoor pesticides is another factor in the resurgence of bed bugs. During the 1960s, it was a very common practice for cockroach control to hire someone to come into the home each month and spray a liquid. In the, uh, along the baseboards and in cracks and crevices, which also had a benefit of reducing or eliminating other insects indoors. During the 90s, there was a shift to baiting for cockroaches, which nearly eliminated all the indoor spraying 
It increased the safety and reduced the risk for the occupants, but it also increased the risk of other insects establishing indoors. When you're sleeping, the bed bug comes out of its harborage and crawls onto your skin and inserts its mouth parts and feeds for about three to eight minutes. The bite is painless and so you don't notice it or wake up. But it, while it's feeding, it's injecting a saliva that keeps the blood flowing and allows it to take that blood without its mouth parts getting stuck into your skin. There is no risk uh, of bed bugs transmitting disease. The main issue with bed bugs is the annoying bites, the scratching, uh, and potentially the secondary infections that could result from the scratching. But to date, no one has ever shown that bed bugs transmit any type of human illness. Unfortunately, hotels are the source of many of these bed bug infestations. People from all over the world rent the same room for a day or two and then leave. Consequently, the likelihood of bed bug transfer among individuals is highest in locations where multiple users carrying their belongings come and go on a regular basis. Well, the old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, is certainly true of bed bugs because if you can uh, not bring them home or get them in the first place, you can save yourself a lot of time, discomfort, and money in the long run. Uh, the first thing that I do whenever I check into a hotel, and which what I recommend to others, is don't take all your luggage all the way into the room. Leave it next to the door after you, after you enter the room. In a hotel, the most likely place to be infested is the headboard and bed because that's where the host is and there isn't a lot of clutter in the hotel room. Look for the bugs themselves. Uh, they, again, they look like little ticks that are kind of a reddish-brown flattened insect. Look for stains, little blackish stains that are staining the wallpaper or the wood on the back of the headboard. Look for uh, other signs. Uh, the, in the around the uh, mattresses and box springs. Check inside the drawers of the nightstands that are sitting next to the bed. And then look at the carpet strip that runs around the base of the wall. It's often found behind pictures that are hanging above the bed where the picture is against the wall. They'll crawl in behind the picture frame. So much like a cockroach, a uh, bed bug is going to look for any kind of uh, location where they can crawl in between two surfaces and feel protected. Hotels are in a really tough spot, but they are taking measures to combat the spread of bed bugs. Uh, most hotels are, have training programs where especially the housekeeping staff are taught and trained how to identify bed bugs and bed bug uh, signs. And if any of those are seen, then rooms are immediately closed down and uh, they typically have contracts with local companies to take care of those issues on a very timely basis. Every time I check into a hotel, I expect that I'm going to see bed bugs and check like they're bed bugs in the room. But the reality is, in all the hotels I've ever checked in, I've never found them personally. If bed bugs do stow away with a traveler, once he returns home, they crawl off his belongings and into the house, where they establish a new population. Again, a traveler's best defense is prevention. I often recommend that they uh, take a few precautions before they put their luggage or clothing away. The first one is to take everything out of their suitcase on top of a sheet that's spread out on the floor, usually a light colored sheet. Take that clothing out, put it immediately into a plastic bag, usually a garbage bag, and close it and then take the clothing and immediately put it in the dryer and turn it on high heat and let it go for about 45 minutes. The high heat will kill any stages of bed bugs that were in the clothing. Then I recommend that you go back and while your luggage is still sitting on that sheet, just check the luggage over, use a light to shine on all the seams and edges and cracks and crevices just to see if you see any movement. If you don't see any movement, then go ahead and put the luggage away. Uh, but this takes about five to 10 minutes of your time and it could save a lot of money and time and discomfort later. 
Bed bugs are often transferred when someone discovers an infested mattress and responds by putting it out on the curb as trash. Someone else sees what appears to be a perfectly good mattress being thrown away. They decide to pick it up and take it, along with its resident bed bugs, back to their home. Rental furniture is another common means of bed bug transmission. If, you, if someone's renting furniture and that furniture is infested, they're very likely to just return it. And while it's in the warehouse, it moves on to other furniture, which is then rented back out to other families or other places. And so bed bugs spread very easily through these rental facilities. If you discover bed bugs in your home, your most practical solution is to call a pest management professional. During the inspection, the pest management professional will look for groups of bed bugs in the most likely harborage sites. They will also look for the digested blood droplets they create. They will search the headboards of the beds, around the seams of mattresses, the box springs, futons, pull-out couches, and clutter found around the host's sleeping areas in all visible cracks and crevices. Keep in mind that bedrooms aren't the only place bed bugs inhabit. Bed bugs are cryptic. That is, they are difficult to find and can occupy countless harborages. So effective pest control requires the treated area to be as free from clutter as possible. One of the biggest predictors of how many bed bugs you might see in a room is the amount of clutter that's there. Bed bugs like to get into all of those cracks and crevices, and so a shelf full of items has hundreds of places where bed bugs can live. And all of these clutter items increase the numbers of bed bugs that could live there to where you can literally have hundreds or thousands of bed bugs if the problem is ignored and, and not dealt with in a timely manner. Caulk and sealants can be used to deny access to potential harborage areas associated with the structure. Sticky traps and double-sided tape wrapped around the foot of the bed can be used to trap and monitor for bed bugs. The foot of the bed can be placed in a shallow bowl filled with talcum powder, which prevents the bugs from climbing out once they have fallen in. Mattresses can be placed inside properly designed mattress covers to trap bed bugs inside. These should have zippers and enclosures that prevent the tiny bed bugs from escaping through the teeth or around the end of the zipper. Tests have shown the Protect-A-Bed mattress cover to be particularly well designed to contain these pests. And science continues to develop new weapons for its bed bug arsenal. One particular area of interest is the development of traps that use CO2, heat, and some volatiles that attract bed bugs. And so some of these products may be available on the market soon. There are also social issues to consider regarding treatment of bed bug infestations, such as the high cost of treatment, particularly for those who may be financially disadvantaged, and if landlords should be held responsible for the behavior of tenants that may result in a bed bug infestation. Even though complaints of bed bugs are expected to continue to increase, with proper precautions, your risk of infestation can be significantly reduced and minimized. And although the aggravation of bed bugs has persisted throughout human history, it is evident that an inclusive control strategy that mitigates bed bug movement and employs proven methods of control can present an effective approach to managing this age-old problem.